The fifth round of the 2007 Formula 1 season takes place in the only notable thing in Spain, Barcelona, Catalunya, and things were changed in terms of the track layout. Herman Tilke and his crew of track modifiers put a chicane where the final corner used to be, and obviously not many people were enthused by it. I'll be honest with you though, I don't think Tilke is that bad. He's been responsible for some fantastic tracks and most of the safety changes were the FIA's decision and not Herman's. So I think this change in particular was a bit unnecessary though, but I digress. The grid was a McLaren Ferrari, McLaren Ferrari bollocking with Felipe Massa on pole, Alonso in second, Raikkonen third and Lewis Hamilton in fourth, with the Sabers impressing once again in fifth and seventh. You know what, I'm actually getting a bit sick of not being able to express my voice in an efficient and consistent manner. I need a voice actor to keep me in check. Good. God, can your introduction of me be any more forced and unrealistic? Dude, I'm pretending not to know what happens in a season that happened nine years ago. You can try and at least roll with it. All right, fine. I'm a voice actor. I'll keep you in check. What the fuck was that? Well, you said you needed a voice actor, and you're about as versatile as a super Famicom trying to work in America, so I'm here to fill in the gaps. I'm not even sure if you're taking this seriously. Oh, I see how it is. You just expect me to waltz in and cure all of your problems just Je like that? No wonder nobody takes you seriously. Jesus, I just wanted a voice actor to have- No! You get what you're given! Well, Super GT is shit! That's a better YouTuber than you will ever be! Don't you ever talk to me or write 500 cows on a Skyline diecast ever again! You know, I'm, I'm starting to think that nobody likes me anymore. So here we are, five lights and for fuck's sake there's an aborted start! Yano, could you not be any more bad with your timing? So here we are, five lights and... <laughs> Massa and Alonso get away, but as they come into the first corner, Alonso attempts to move on Massa and makes contact with him and sends him into the gravel, giving second place to Hamilton and nearly taking out everyone else in the process. You're a failure to everyone in Spain, Fernando! The fact that you won last year's race now means nothing! Alexander Wurtz has a crash, so look at the top four cars coming around the last corner, because that's far more interesting. No, 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 no. A spiker is never going to overtake anyone. Don't let this attempt fool you. It's not a case that they're not allowed, it's more a case of they can't. It's impossible! Alonso makes a move on Raikkonen, and it doesn't work. Once you fuck up turn one on the very first lap, it just goes downhill after that. You can't get yourself back up. You know when people criticise the recent F1 season for having predictable results? Name a race in 2007 where the Ferraris or the McLarens weren't in the top four and the Sauers weren't in the top six. I thought so. Oh, and uh, please don't actually tell me this is just a silly joke. So let's analyse this. First, the Super Guri brakes a lot harder than the Renault in front, which in turn makes the Toyota slow down in reaction while Verts had nowhere to go and ended up hitting the back of the Toyota. In conclusion, Super Guri drivers are shit, and before you ask, no, Bottas is not in that car. Shut up, it's not funny anymore. Oh! Raikkonen's out! That's a real shame! It actually isn't, but there's a whole market of Raikkonen fans waiting me to say nice things about him, so here it is. Raikkonen is still shit though. Scott Speed's left rear tyre completely disintegrates on the straight, giving the Toro Rosso team's boss more of a reason to physically attack Scott Speed, apart from the fact that he's annoying as shit and brags about having a large cock. Wow! Nine seconds behind? Lewis certainly doesn't deserve the championship at all by being behind another driver by a significant length, because that's how Formula 1 works. The one who deserves the championship always wins. Massive pits and nothing fucking happens in the pits. Why the fuck do I always segue to the pits? There's nothing ever going... Oh. Oh, for fuck's sake. Why do I even bother? Maybe you're just a little late on the fire extinguisher there. Lietzi is the next car to taste the retirement medicine, as his car realistically isn't that much faster than it was working. Ha ha ha, get it? Because it's a shit car. It's funny! Fucking laugh! Jensen Button loses his front wing, thanks to his teammate. What? Well, nobody is going to be slow enough to, you know, hit the Hondas anyway, so they might as well take each other out. Sauber do it all the time now. Nick Heidfeld pits and doesn't even get going. Why is it that I mentioned pit stops having nothing good in them, and then this, a massive fire happens? Why do I even bother? He went over the white line! Immediate disqualification!
disqualification. Immediate re <coughs> <coughs> Okay, so the two most technologically advanced and financially thriving teams in F1 have trouble with their cars in some way or form. Is this why they have so many leftovers for updates on the car? So that Felipe can finally be able to keep the headrest stuck to the car. But seriously though, fuck Ferrari. Would you like a depressing fact? Nick Heidfeld has not won anything in a racing series since 1999. Ever. That's really, really, really depressing. And if you must remember that this is the guy that nearly won the first ever Formula E race back in 2014. Not before getting his ass kicked by Prost's offspring. The only thing we can all learn from this is that Prost ruins everything for everyone. Forget the ice cream, forget the Monaco antics, forget BOAH! This is the new Kimmy meme. I don't know how it's gonna blow up, but we'll find a way. Hashtag Kimmy travels. Ralph Schumacher uses his better judgement over his broken psyche after nearly running over one of his pit lane crew. I knew things weren't going to be the same when Michael left, but this is just too far. Please come back. I miss you. One of the benefits of being an elapsed spiker is that you can brag to your non-racing fans that you were behind Alonso for a few seconds, and sort of, kinda not keeping up with him. Kinda like knowing a friend who knows a friend who knows a friend who knows the guy who sung Agadu. And because Matt reminded me that I didn't play the victory theme for Massa last race, I might as well do it today, because the winner of the 2007 Spanish Grand Prix is Felipe Massa do Brasil! I always do it better, even when I fucking hate the drivers that are winning. Always! <laughs>